Welcome in the mayor of the city of Marsburg, Kevin <laughs> Knuckles Nolsey. How you doing, Knuckles? I'm uh, doing good. Good doing to see good. you again. Good to see you. Yeah. You know, my role at Dex was uh, uh, those address books. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I used to carry those little, what they would call black books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd open up your, your lapel, you'd bring out the book, and you go, uh, You owe me this $50, <laughs> cross that one off. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, oh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. That guy about. needs a new wing. You always, right? you always yeah. go down that road that, that I have there. no clue, that I have no clue. You know, and then pick up a gallon of milk and a pound of sugar for the drive home. <laughs> Just another day at the office. Hey, they were. Re I thought of you uh, over the Thanksgiving break because Showtime was rerunning the series Ray Donovan. They were doing a series every single day of the week, and uh, that's just an awesome show, man. Oh, it's too bad it went off. Yeah, and, yeah. and they they canceled it. He wanted to do one more season, and they canceled it. But they yeah. did do a movie. I so. don't. I don't understand that because that was very, very good show that they put together there's a simple test for if they cancel a show is it do i like the show if they do if i do then they cancel the show that's, that's how it works if i like the show it's canceled yeah. right you got to keep your opinions to yourself then that can't happen <laughs> I, I, got, I got 10 hours a week to fill <laughs> right hey uh let's uh let's talk about the new city manager andy blake i know he was going to be with you today but uh, circumstances changed but uh, yeah, he, how's that transition going Unfortunately, his uh, his wife uh, had gotten a little bit ill, and he has got a few young kids that he's got to get off to school today. And uh, that transition, it's it's like it's not a transition period because uh, Andy's been part of the team for a few years now and uh, has done very very well as a, as Mark's assistant. And and it was just stepping up was uh was, he was all ready for that. He has a background of being a city manager. Look. He did a lot of great work in Ranson uh, a few years back, and so he's he's been in city uh, city government and city administration for a long time. Very good. And uh, does is Mark Baldwin staying in the area, or did he move? Is he moving out? No, Mark. Mark's still around. In fact, I, I saw him paying a bill yesterday. Uh, he is uh, he's taking his time and just relaxing and enjoying time right now. And what, what his plans are, I couldn't tell you. That's something that he would have to tell you whether he has any or not. Oh, he wouldn't tell me. That was some dead air there. I just want to see if you'd laugh. I want to see if I can make you maybe, maybe crack not, a smile. I, I, I am not making a comment on that. No. That's between you and Mark. Hey, uh, let's uh, let's also talk about Lambert Pool here because I understand that there may be a little bit of movement there. Well, you know what? Lambert Pool has been the talking point not only all summer, but uh, you know a lot of things being said, good, bad, and indifferent, uh, directed to city and county and, and, and rec, uh, rec board and you know the city has a, a an engineering firm called CEC that we have uh, we have take we we give them a contract for a couple of years and and they we 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 had put a work order for them to take a look at one uh, coming back with uh, dip, different options as far as what can be done out at Lambert and also taking a look at what if anything could be done to repair what's there currently mm -hmm. so. Uh, by doing that, now we have several options, and instead of doing a knee-jerk reaction and deciding to spend an awful lot of money, uh, we went back and took a look at the pool, and, and it appears the pool can be fixed. Uh, and That's can, kind of a new revelation. And, and, it, and it can be fixed at a very, very reasonable cost. Uh, so um, in the next week or two, they're going to be doing <clears throat> some repairs so that there's hopefully no um, no holdup for next year. And um that, again, depends on weather, so we can't guarantee that we're going to get the work done prior to the winter season coming, but we're, we're working very hard and very diligent on trying to get this work done so that those plans that they have presented us with different options, we can take that and look at it at a longer-term process rather than trying to put a lot of money together to, to, to uh, build these facilities as it sits today. But... Our most, the most important thing was to get the get some kind of pool opening for next year. Uh, if we had, if we didn't go and take a look at Lambert Pool to see if it could be repaired, uh, we wouldn't be able to open probably for the next couple of years because of the the plans to to either rebuild or, or add on. Is it a permanent fix? No, uh, no, this is not going to be permanent because uh, I think what we're we're planning on looking at, uh, you know, we have to get with Parks and Rec and 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 the county that that there is a bigger plan that we can put together, but it gives us now time to plan not only uh, the the facility or the add-ons, but also 
uh, the financial end of things where, you know, we were running, you know, running with our heads cut off a little bit trying to see what we were going to do to find the money to, to, to make things happen. But, you know, we, we were blessed to be able to find that the, the pool, uh, as far as we know, as of today, can be fixed and, and, and it will be fixed and, and they'll be swimming at Lambert Pool next year. So what changed? I mean, this is a, a, a big departure. Was it a special factor that was discovered that well, I, I, I think uh, uh, I think if you were to take a look at it, that uh, we brought in an expert. Uh, I don't uh, believe that, that an expert might have not have been called in. It was because of the cost of it. You know, the city had put some money away for this to be able to take a good look at it, so that we can have a an informed decision on which direction that the city might want to go. Uh, it does sit within our city. We agree that we need another pool in that area, and we're going to do everything we can to, to put it there. So, you know, by bringing in this, uh, this this is a company that came in uh, through CEC that had built the facility out in um, Bridgeport called the Bridge, and they built the pools and everything there. So you know, I think it was just uh, the upper level of, of uh, expertise to come in and take a look at it. What was broken? in the pool what did you know, it I, do i could not tell you okay. I, I couldn't tell you the the details i know that there's some pipes that need to be fixed uh some some stuff as, as far as the pool itself has to be fixed but uh, all i know is that uh, uh we are moving forward and we're moving forward with the anticipation that this pool can be fixed and we'll be opening up for next uh, next year so that gives you a little extra time, as you said, then to determine what the long-term fix will be. Is is it still kind of the the several different plans or options then that will be looked at that have already been talked about from a splash park to a whole new pool and that sort of thing? That's correct. We we have put together. Uh, CEC has presented us with uh, some different options of what the future could look like. And, and then now we have not put the, the dollar signs on it, but uh, if you take a look at it, you can tell one's a lot more expensive than the other. And, and then when it comes to that, do we either bond it out? Do we, uh, are we, are we going to get the, uh, who, who are going to be the, the uh, financial entities that are getting involved, the county, uh, the Board of Ed, whoever. But there's there's a lot of different options. Now. There's some really, really, I don't want to say a lot. I think there was two or three that uh, that were really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to take time for that to build. So uh, if we didn't take a look at the pool and Lambert Pool to give us some time to you know plan out and find the financial end of things, maybe get some state or federal money to do this, that um, you know we wouldn't be looking at uh, having a pool there for a couple of years. Will it be built in the exact same spot? In other words, the repair allows you to swim next summer. If uh, over the course of a year the financing comes together and now it's time for that permanent fix, will it then have to be shut back down because you're tearing apart and building right where you are? Or do you build in another area there between, say, the rec center and, and North Middle School? Well, that's a good question. And, and to, to be quite honest, uh, we could do either or. I mean, okay. I think we can do a flip-flop and, and do the construction on the back end of it, and then, you know, the front end would be turned into whether it be parking lot or whatever it might okay. be at that time. Does the fact of a functioning pool take some of the um, political will? Do you anticipate, not yours necessarily, but in general, when, when something is working, there's less sense of urgency that we've got to take the permanent fix? No, I, I think that we all know. Um, at least I, I'm going to say Kevin Knowles knows and the, and the city council knows that we are uh, we are in need of, of replacing that, that pool one way or the other. Uh, we are just didn't want to do something in a knee-jerk reaction or be, be have a foot on our throat to be able to come up with kind of funding for that, which is very tough. It's not they're not they're not cheap. It's very expensive to to build on. And if we're going to do it, we want to do it right. Mm -hmm. Do we want to do an indoor? Do we want to do an outdoor? Do we want to do both? Do we want to do a splash pad? Do we want to add some other uh, uh, other amenities to it to make it more like a, a club atmosphere? So those are things that are that are being thrown at the, on the mm -hmm. table to take a look at. And, and, and now we have an opportunity to, to, to look at that stuff. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program. Uh, Jennifer Smith, who's the president of the Parks and Rec Board, uh, said thank you to the city of Martinsburg, by the way, for the uh, the study and the work you're doing. I suppose uh, is what she was implying with that. Thank you on the uh, the Lambert Pool. On that, also, we have some Lake Thomas questions, and uh, here's a couple of them. Here, one is 
when do you anticipate that being open to the public? Two, is uh, stormwater being diverted into Lake Thomas? And three, does that affect the clarity of the water and the cleanliness of the water at Lake Thomas? Some of those I could answer. Okay, <laughs> your choice. Uh, uh, now, there's stormwater, as I understand, is, is currently going into uh, um, into Lake Thomas. It has been. Uh, it's going to be upgraded uh, because of the project uh, that's going on with Monument up there for the the housing development at the, at the factory there, and they're going to be taking care of uh, 61 acres of stormwater management or stormwater upgrades. So you're going to see a lot of construction going on in that area, so that it'll be upgraded into uh, Lake Thomas. So that is currently being worked on. Uh, funding is still being worked on. Uh, Craig Blair has been very, been very gracious and working very hard to trying to to help uh, fix that or help help uh, help with that because it's a it's a big number item that. Uh, the city has about two million dollars invested in it, and the monument has about two million, and it's that's probably about five point nine million is what it's going to cost. So, you know, we're trying to work on it's going to happen, but we're just trying to get the other other sense of the money to be able to make it happen. Right. Any other information on Lake Thomas? Lake Thomas, they're working on. Uh, do do I anticipate a, a springtime uh, opening? I, I I don't at this point because you know we're coming into the winter months and. And there's not much that they they can really do out there at this point. So, you know, I, I would anticipate s some activity happening there, starting in spring and, and moving forward. So, my hopes are to to have something there, either later 2024 or uh, early 2025. Christmas in the city of Martinsburg, Kevin. Christmas Bowl. Well, we have uh, Christmas on Main this uh, this Saturday. I, I believe it starts at 11 o'clock and goes to seven. And uh, they're going to have uh, all kinds of events down there and all kind of great uh, food trucks and, and also the tree lighting at 6 o'clock on, uh, on Saturday. Are you a big part of all that? Oh, I, you know what? I, I participate in it. Uh, you know, Main Street does, the, does all the work. Uh, and all, they, all they expect from me is to come down and, and show up and turn on the lights, I guess. You can do that. <laughs> right? I, I can do that. And sure. You know what? I, I really enjoy it. I, I, I go down there. Whenever there's an event, I, I go down early before they start so I can, you know, see if anybody needs anything, talk to the people that are coming in, thanking the, the food trucks for, you know, bringing their business into the downtown. And then, of course, uh, get the food early because I didn't want to stand in line. I, 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 get, I could test some of their grills. And, and then, then, I, then I'll, I'll be around for the day and then uh, you know, tree, lighting, tree lighting at night. Let's talk about the re-election of Mayor Kevin Knowles. Well, it won't be a re-election. It'll be an election. I am right. not an elected mayor, uh, as I'm, as I've been told. So, um, I would like <laughs> what is, what repeatedly. Is, what, what does that mean? <laughs> I would I would like an opportunity to be an elected mayor, and and I have um, expressed on this show and elsewhere that uh, that uh, I am running for for the, a term as a uh, mayor of Martinsburg, and and that process starts in January. January is when you register and so anybody that's uh, going to be registering for any of the the, uh, the either mayor or council seats uh, that's when they would would uh, seek those papers and go get those signatures but I, you know I'm I'm excited about it I you know I've been I learned to you know Mark Baldwin go back to him I learned an awful lot from Mark Baldwin as uh, as becoming a mayor he 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 taught me an awful lot he had a lot of experience uh, not only as city manager, but working with the, the mayors over the last 20 years. And, and uh, he was very, very good at giving me and helping me with some direction. And I'll, and I'll, I'll always thank him for that because uh, without that direction, I, I don't think I'd be the mayor that I am today and uh, being able to work with uh, Andy Blake the way he and I work because we're, you know, we're, we're a good team and we plan on, we, we're hoping to be around uh, a, lot, a little bit of time together to be able to continue, continue to do the work that we have been doing within the city over the last two and a half years and continuing that down the road. What do you tout as your biggest accomplishments in the time that you've served? Well, you know, the, you, we finished off the, we finished off the uh, Martin Street corridor down into there uh, and I believe that that was one of the biggest ones that I was very proud of because that was uh, something that that I promised that I would follow through for 
for uh, uh, Mayor uh, Harriet Johnson, and that was her that was her big project. So I wanted to make sure that got done and got done right. So I was very proud of that. And and then we have the underpass there on Queen Street that has come along very well. If you take a look at some of the uh, stuff which is not seen right now, is is we have a new turnaround over there in front of the Roundhouse off of Liberty Street, and we've made some changes on directions, which I think is going to be more conducive to having events at the at the Roundhouse, which is a big one's coming up. Uh, April 6th and 7th is the, the home show, so they're going to have the third year of the home show down there, and that brings in about 5,000 people a year, and, and they're starting to, to, to grow a little bit, and we'd like to see that. We see uh, the, the funding that we were able to give to not only Parks and Rec, but also to, uh, uh, to the Apollo and to the Roundhouse for the renovations that you're seeing. So I'm real, I'm real excited about being part of that and having to help direct through council to be able to make those entities grow so that if they grow, we're going to have a nice, vibrant uh, uh, arts center down in, in downtown Martinsburg, and it, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And, and I tell people all the time, keep your eyes and ears open. Martinsburg's moving forward, and we're moving forward real fast, real quick. And also, uh, you know, I've been in on the beginning since the 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 monument program of the the old mill up there, and and uh, you know that is going to be a, a game changer. You know, we're we're going to start seeing those rentals being rented sometime in uh, the spring. You know, it could be as early as February that some of those units are going to be ready for uh, rental, and and that's going to be uh, huge because we're going to the the hopes are we're going to bring bring in young. Uh, young adults, professional adults, to be able to uh, live and work not only just in the city but also to have fun within the city. And you have some great restaurants downtown. You know, it's going to continue to grow. And there's some other things that are that, that are in the works to be able to have another restaurant downtown and, and all kinds of great things. And, and this the, the garage that uh, Diego Lasada is putting together, that to me is going to be – that 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 is a, that's a step forward, you know, a very very big step forward and a big risk on somebody's part. I had an opportunity when I was in Wheeling to see such a, a such the same type of uh, uh, space that he's putting together, and and they're doing fabulous. So I'm just excited to be part of uh, the guidance of the of the council and to be able to work as mayor of the city of Martinsburg to be able to move things forward. And a lot of great things happening on the state level that 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 really excites me as a as mayor and on an individual basis and on on a job basis is I represent the state of West Virginia now as uh, the uh, the mayor that uh, works with the Southern Municipal Conference, which is all the mayors in the southern parts of the states, and and it gives me an opportunity to work with individuals and talk to individuals about all their successes and things that they've been doing, and go figure. You know what? Their problems are the same problems everybody else has. Some are just bigger and some are just smaller. Mr. Gilstrap. Let's talk about the garage. It's a very intriguing concept. What all is going in there? It's going to be multiple vendors, is that right, in, within the the one facility? Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you how I know it, so I could screw it up if I tell you. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, you know, I'm not part of that, so uh -huh. I don't own it. And, and uh, it's my understanding there's going to be four or five vendors food vendors in there with a bar lounge that, that is also going to be uh, be run there it's going to be open i believe six days a week uh, and uh, they're expecting uh, they're they're projecting about 300 people a day going through there which you know going through that that part of town and and once that monument opens it, it's a walking a walking place for for individuals to live there to go and and seek entertainment and 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 food good quality food whether indoors and outdoors, because they have a nice patio out there also. And the first phase of the interwoven mill project, how many apartments will there be? Do you know? Well, I believe they say there's a hundred and, I want to say 115, 120. And my numbers could be off a little bit, but uh, uh, it's not just 10 or 15. Right. Uh, you know, they're going to have a, a good number that's going to be up and ready. And, uh, you so know, essentially you're going to open that whole building? The, the, what Phase one, uh, I is to the if you're looking at uh, interwoven, it's to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the the building that they would be working on getting over, so they have access from from Porter Avenue and and be able to uh, to be able to access it from there. Because uh, they're, they're going to continue to be doing their work there in the courtyard and and the, you know they're putting the pool in there and all that. So that work 
is going to continue as as uh, as people are are being residents there. Mr. Miller, are there folks already lining up? Do you know to to get into those apartments with uh, with uh, you know the progress that is taking place right now? It's my understanding that uh, this month or December, I should say, um, by talking to Monument, that they're putting together a a rental team. Uh, a management rental management team that will start at that point whether it be advertising or seeking out or starting to take applications but uh, I can't see that not uh, mm -hmm. being something that would fill up real quick real fast and and I would be real surprised and that project is rolling on schedule and uh, no major uh, difficulties that they've had or? well I mean you know in the long run we're all waiting for that uh, that the, the fix for the stormwater and mm -hmm. and that's going to happen uh, you know just depending on you know where the money's going to come from but you know the city the one thing the state and the feds always like is we have skin in the game you know we have 1.9 million uh, somewhere close to that involved in this stormwater upgrade and and and, and they also have uh, 2 million involved in it cuz when it first started that was the number but with with COVID and everything that that went went a little bit haywire, that's that that has uh, jumped a little bit. How much will this bring growth in the city, even as far as population? With uh, you know a hundred plus apartments, and and you're adding to the numbers. Uh, is there any thought of annexation and continuing to see the city grow? Well, you know, there's always thoughts of uh, annexation. Uh, I mean, it's not something that 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 we've had uh, long discussions over over the last uh, several years but you know there are areas if you take a look at the city map there are some some plots that 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 sit in the middle of the city <laughs> that are in fact right across the street from me there's an eight block um, spot surrounded by the city and it's and it's in the county and and so those are things that we would hope to to be able to clean up and and be able to uh, straighten out our lines a little bit but I, I believe we have we have like 1800 1800 uh, uh, buildings or, or uh, households that are going to be added to the city of Martinsburg here uh, over the next couple of years with the, with the building that's been going on. Kev, last word is yours. Well, I, I, again, I you know um, I can't speak enough highly enough about Andy Blake, and I'm you know really sorry that you know his wife's feeling the way she is, and and uh, you're going to see some great things moving forward from Andy Blake in the city of Martinsburg. And I tell you, keep your eyes and ears open because we're moving forward real quick, real fast. And we want you all to get on board and enjoy the ride. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you for having me. The mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles.